hunting. Sports Panorama is back. Serving you the hottest, most educative, and of course, sports with the sauce. We are live. To the camp of Kumasi Asante Kotoko we go. Interesting happenings in the camp of Asante Kotoko. We'll be getting into that. My name is Benjamin Inketia. Welcome to the best 90 minutes of your life. Daniel Kranting is here. These days, I think he supports Juventus. He's yet to make an official announcement, though. He says he's looking for an excuse to go anywhere that has his idols. So one leg is at Juventus. I think one leg will be wherever Cristiano Ronaldo lands as well. Yeah, but he's here. Nate Kwao is here. Raman Osman is back in the building. And then, of course, the rabbi. Rabbi. A host of issues to discuss. Like I said, Asante Kotoko's Prosper Nate Ogum has resigned. According to reports. Yes, we'll be getting into that. There's also some transfer news to get on with. Who is moving? Who is staying put? Ghana's relay team will be in action in a couple of hours. They will be competing in the heats. Remember that Alexa Mankwa has competed. Joseph Paul Amwa has competed. Benjamin Azamati has competed as well. So now we have the relays to go. And then Deborah Aqua will be competing in the long jump tomorrow. So there's a lot to talk about. But just like we always do on the show, the rabbi came in time. Yeah, Charlie Rabbi. <laughs> You know how to set the tone for the show. Please put us in the spirit. Yo, I want double shee. One double shee, go, I can go and swa, a banana war. Menaswa, Nimaswa, Namaswa, Wakogbele, I chow manche yeliaba. One double shee, when in Yamino Rama, etia, we bat. Oh, they bat and Jenna Konoko, you are a tree. They are Manoko. Nia Baleaba, Nia Baleaba, Rama. Ramane, <laughs> Zero e ya lo e ba. Ke ya ya kwa jayin. Ke ba yin chile wa yin chino wa ya a jowo. E ne me ke ni bi pi wo bi o yon gwe ame. Amen. Amen. Let's start off this conversation by going to Kumase. And that's how we will begin the conversation today. Um, Let's get all the way to Kumase and see if we can get some perspective to all the Kumase Asante Kotoko board management, uh, technical team, players, Prospernate. There's a lot going on with the club. So we're, we're going to try and see if we can bring some uh, sanity to all the issues. Um, let's let's quickly uh, get to that. But Nathan, let me even start off with you uh, on all this Kotoko um, melee that's been going on. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but there was something in my spirit. You know, I always tell you that when House of Folk and Kotoko end the season, right, and everything appears too calm, it is too good to be true. And it really appeared that it was too good to be true. Well, I was just minding my business. We were having a slow news day. And then all of a sudden, breaking news was flying in from yeah. all angles. But you've heard the issues. Prospernate has resigned, according to reports. <laughs> the club is officially um, yet to announce it. But I don't think they will. Um, are you surprised by this? And w- w- what did you make of it when you first heard about it? When I first saw the tweet, it was put out by um, another colleague of ours. And I said, this can't be true. This is one of those crazy things we say all the time. And then more of our other colleagues, so one colleague said so, more of our other colleagues started to tweet. And once those others started to mention it, then I started to wonder, mm, could this be true? So the, the next day, and I mean, later that day, I saw 
more and more people provided different perspectives. And you could tell that whatever it was, there were some crazy things happening behind the scenes at Asante for Soko. And then the next day, I, I um, got to find out a bit more. At least I heard from a high-ranking Kosoko official. Mm -hmm. And I heard the perspective of that official and some of the things I heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, some of it will surprise you. Do you want to share with us on the I, show? I can, I can share. Just Even before you go on, I, I, I will come in studio yes. and take thoughts and perspective. Yes. But let's go to Kumasi first. Um, okay, we'll, 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 get, we'll get back to Kumasi in a bit. It looks like our guest is trying to position himself properly so he can give us good uh, quality sound. But Nathan, you're, you're about to just yes. give us a little perspective. You know, so, so what I heard from that high-ranking Kosoko official, put, it made me see the entire situation in, in, in a very, very interesting light. So mm. I, I heard, uh, you know, that a number of... My and juice, no? That, so essentially, that the season had come to an end. Mm. And Prosper Nate Ogum, as it happens with all teams, he was supposed to meet the, the technical committee or the board and discuss that. So he had first spoken to the technical committee of the board, and then he had to speak to the larger board. Now, the larger board, according to this narration I heard, reached out to Dr. Nate Ogum to find out where he was. He wasn't in the jurisdiction. He was in Cape Coast. I say, ah, why are you in Cape Coast? He says, well, I'm doing other things. And... They say, well, we pay you full time, and you know that these meetings are important. You have to be here. Would you care to tell? Would you know what other things he was doing? I, I don't know. Maybe national team duties, but okay. he was in Cape Coast. Okay. You know, he the man teaches at UCC too. Yeah. So. And I hear he's one of the technical members of the Black Galaxy. So it could be that maybe he was back at UCC or something. I don't know, but he was in Cape Coast. They said, okay, whatever. Let's let's go through this. Then, according to this narration from this high-ranking Kosoko official, Doctor Nate Ogum says. I want 10 players in and another 17 out of the team. And they're going, ah, why do you want 17 players out of the team? Some of the players you have listed are players you wanted at the start of just, the just ended season. And after a few months, you don't want them anymore. And re references were made to a particular player who the coach said he wanted that player come hell or high water. And Asante Kotoko had to pay out of heavy money from their pocket to get that player. 10 months later, you say you don't like the player. And they said, well, that's not how things are done. You need to understand that the budget we have for this African challenge is a certain set amount. If we expend all of it buying players, it won't make sense. And we can't compete and do well. Well, the says, well, that's what I want. If you can't give me that, I have one year on my contract, I'm quitting. Well, you, I mean, you can't do that. You know, and then I had all kinds of issues concerning his official car, you know. <laughs> so it, before his official car showed up, According to what I know, he was giving a particular car to use as an interim. And then the official car shows up. He's presented the official car. He says, hey, I won't give back the car I was given because I've grown to like the car I have. And they say, well, the car you have now is not yours. It's somebody. So you have your official car and give us back the car we gave you. Back and forth, back and forth, all kinds of things. Whatever, all those, and I, there are other things I heard I, I can't repeat here. But the bottom line is that there have been things that have not worked well between Dr. Nate Ogum and the Kotoko management. And it looks like all of it came to a head at the end of the season. And then he said he was walking away. I'm sure we'll speak to some people in Kumasi who have a better understanding. But all of these things I'm saying are things I heard from the perspective of a high-ranking Kotoko official. So this perspective is from the Kotoko management side. Maybe we'll get to hear what the coach's perspective is. We'll put the two together, draw the line through, and then we can make our own judgment. Always how it should be done. You can join the conversation via text, WhatsApp, and Telegram 0549-986-996, 0549-986-996. If you are just joining us, we are discussing Asante Kotoko's issue. So on Wednesday, um, news broke that Asante Kotoko head coach Prosper Nate Ogum or Dr. Prosper Nate Ogum, uh, who had led them to their first league title since 2013-2014, uh, had decided to step away from his role. I mean, that's very unheard of because yeah, typically you've qualified the team for Africa. You'd want to take the team to Africa and see what you can get out of them. But um, following that particular resignation, a lot has been made about it. A lot of things have been said. We have somebody um, on the phone lines to give us some perspective to everything that's been going on because there seem, it, it seems as if there really, really is a lot going on. Um, Collins Atapoku is joining us from Kumase with Sumpa. Um, I, I think it's Sumpa FM. Yeah, Sumpa FM, Collins. Uh, good evening and welcome to Sports Panorama, Collins. 
good evening, Ben. Thanks for having me. My regards to everybody in there. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm sure um, we're all happy to hear from you. Let's quickly delve into the Asante Kotoko issues and let's get some perspective. So we are hearing two different sides of a story where there's a side that paints the picture of Ogum, the victim, and there's a side that paints the picture of the board and the technical team as the victim in all of this. But just give us a clear picture, right? I mean, for, for those of us sitting on the sidelines, we didn't know that a lot of this was happening. We've heard that there was a rift between him and management on players. There was unpaid salaries. A lot of allegations flying around. First of all, um, from where you sit, where you are, did you ever get the sense that Prosper was going to resign? And if you did, what were the indicators for you? Well, thank you very much, Benjamin. And let me quickly speak unequivocally that Prosper has not been a happy man for some time. And all these appearances in the public and all the praises he has shown on the CEO, he also has resentment attached to it. These are very normal with him and establishment and people in their relationship. One of the things that we have observed in Kumasi is that Prosper is that glue that takes every fiber of Kotoko together. The fans love him, or therefore, the uh, former players are going to him, or therefore, the players love playing for him, or therefore, the management also like the coach they got because he's delivering and he's the standard for everybody. He's dressing, he's demeanor, the way he goes about the place, so everything is perfect outside. But it comes to me, I said that he had to juggle staying true to himself and helping the club to win the league and then also trying to be the main man who is not happy and has to tell people that I'm not happy. So there are difficulties. Mm. Now, you talk about... Our very first indicator uh-huh, was uh-huh. right before the... But one game before they went to Takwa. Uh, the last uh, game before they went to Takwa, he substituted Nabankuna, who was angry and was saying all sorts of stuff on his way out of the pitch. On Monday, he didn't go to training. They called. He said he had a neck problem. And they, they told him to come and see the medical staff who would help. He didn't come. Kotoko went to Takwa with... 17 players, they had to go to the hospital and get Yusuf Mubarak to make it easy. When they got to Takwa, he got, his case worsened. He had to be put on drip. And then they came back to Kumasi. He wanted to reprimand Amankuna. And people within management wouldn't allow him to do that. So he was going away uh, and frustrated at the same time. Very interesting thoughts there. Let's talk about the individual components of some of the things that supposedly made him unhappy. Now, one of the first things I heard that baffled me was the fact that he has not been paid for a while now. I've seen reports say six months. I've seen some say four months. I, I picked up the fact that he earns 4,000 US dollars per month. First of all, can you confirm the amount for us? And can you also confirm for us if these salary arrears issues are actually true? Yes, he takes 4,000 dollars. And yes, he is old. But, I mean, was that a problem for Prosper? Is that one of the reasons why he eventually decided to pull the trigger? The players were old. Salaries and bonuses. The administrative staff at the Secretariat have gone 45 months without salary. None of them have resigned. All these things are issues that have come to the fore because of this very unpass playing out in public. There's a real issue which is that equals irreconcilable differences with the members of management. That is, working environment is toxic, and then the relationship has broken down. Let's put all the English aside. Co- Collins, just, just, just slow, slow, down. slow down for me a little. Let me get some detail out of you. When you say the environment had become toxic, you, you definitely have painted the Stephen Amancona um, picture, but what else can you tell us? I mean, you, you also alluded to the fact that a lot of these are regular relationships or regular things that every every working environment endures. When you say toxic environment especially, what exactly do you mean? Well, yeah, Edu is a member of the board of Asante Kosoko. Today he's granted an interview in Kumasi and told the entire world that Ogun would meet the board as well as Sanaya and Ponsa would also meet the board on Monday. Why? Because they know for a fact that the coach and the CEO had a very bad relationship. It's broken down, and they would need to settle the impasse between the two. And that if they are, Prosper decides that he's going to go, then they would bless him and tell him to go. 
So the board member has actually nailed it for us. That's that's a very interesting proposition. But we also know that in, in Kumasi and when it comes to Kotoko, the great king, um, Otufo, always has to bless a decision or um, otherwise. How how is how how is his court taking in all of this? Because nothing happens without Nana knowing and nothing happens without his blessing or otherwise. So how is he taking in all of this? Well, we, we actually not heard from him that the board has released the memo today stating that they've just heard on radio and read on social media spaces and traditional media spaces that um the court case is resigned. As far as they are concerned, nothing of that sort has happened and that they are going to meet on Monday, the CEO and then the coach. So if you look at it carefully, the Asantini decided to appoint a board, which in turn appointed a management. The board's position, obviously, is the Asantini's position, because I'm pretty sure the chief executive um, officer of the Manchester Palace, Kofi Bedu, uh, has, Kofi Bedu, has spoken to the king, and he directed him to tie back the board, that, look, you guys should do A, B, C, and D for me quickly. And that's why they are meeting on Monday. So the two. board member mm -hmm. Yawardu has actually painted the picture clearly for all of us on traditional media space here in Kumasi today. Two more questions before you go. First one is about the issue of disagreements between Prosper and management on player transfers and recruitment. We hear that the board and management were not too pleased with some of his recruitment choices ahead of the next campaign whereas he was not pleased with some of his key players that were being allowed to leave and, and stuff like that. Can you substantiate any of that for us? Yeah, this thing did happen, but they've been blown out of proportion by people who are trying to seek positive PR in the media space. Costa submitted a list of 10 players who were to be put on transfer and then put across a list of 17 that he would want. Now, in that list, he did not state that he wanted all those 17 he actually says that get 10 out of these 17 for me. So you pick, for instance, center back. In that list, he has Henriansu from Beku Be Chelsea, and then he has Knudu Adam from Wafa. In attack, he has Yawano there. We all know Yawano is in Egypt. He has Renato Kui there. But what came out was that he had actually told them that he wanted the Tezuta. But we know from that list that if a midfielder is there and is the one he really wants to give, 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 it is dominant. It is a from Accra Lion. So I can tell you from that angle that the Kazuta's name is not even on that list. But now the picture painted outside is that, oh, he wants 17. When he actually wants 10 to replace them. So, I mean, which same person would put 10 on transfer and request for 17? There would always be these disagreements. They've always had them. When they were bringing in Dixon Afuakwa, Adomako, and Safu Taylor, he wasn't so pleased because he felt there are others there who could be trusted to do the work. But the coach also went out of his way to insist that they sign Amankuna for him. So these things always happen. And because of positive fear and people seeking to be good in the eyes of the public, everybody is here saying stuff. The disagreements came up. Even Itsuga and Bella, who was their top scorer and their most prized asset came. When he was coming, there were disagreements of his coming. But it didn't play out in the public space. So when you have the administrative manager of the team going to no other outlet but graphic to tell them that the coach has indeed resigned, indicated that he wants to resign, and that he asked them to um, sign 17 players. And then the board comes out to say that nothing of that sort happened and they were all in the same meeting. And it's the critical ugly politics that has taken charge currently. Hmm. Finally, before you go, I mean, the input I'm getting from all that you've said is that despite us discussing passionately that Prosper has resigned, the club's official position is that he is still on, on their books and that he hasn't resigned. Am I getting you right? Yes. As it stands, Kotoko has not even issued any communique on that. Secondly, the management members briefed press in Kumasi that Nobody should say if Prosper, they are still talking to Prosper to change his mind. When the film started yesterday and today. But that's, that's two, the two conflicting bits of information. Absolutely. And I'm the board, which is the highest decision making body, says that, look, not for that sort. And it do goes to say that, look, there is a problem between the senior and the coach, and you are meeting them on Monday.
what for, what, what do you personally think will happen? Will Ogum um, put his issues away and return as Kotoko manager, or you think that this is a marriage that has definitely broken down and can't be repaired? Initially, we were all talking about a coach who had indicated that he was going out of his way to not continue his job. Now it is Kotoko politics. It's now between the management and the board who are on the polar opposite position. Songo is a management member. We heard him yesterday. Dasubere is a management member. We've heard him. Now, Kwan Namensa, who is the board secretary, has indicated that there's nothing happening. Now, another board member says there's a problem between the CEO and then the coach. So, if Prosper stays, he stays because the board pushed their way through. If he comes back, it is the board and Prosper on one side, and then the CEO and the management on the other side. I'm not worried about what happens to Prosper, whether he goes or he stays. But the post Prosper decision conflict management will test the politics at play in Kumasi Asante especially with a slant on Dr. Kwambuche and his relationship with the CEO and Anaya Prosper. Well, Collins, let's leave it here. It seems like a very messy situation. The more I try to probe, the more it appears the issue is very tangled. So let's leave it here and see if by Monday, I mean, the issue should have cleared up a bit so we can make some sense of everything. But thank you for your time. I appreciate the insight and everything. And big shout outs to everybody in our sick room. I'm most grateful, Ben. And let's do this again and soon. Thank you very much, sir. So Collins Atapoku, Sompa FM joining us there. Kumasi based Nathan. Hey! You heard him. Kotoko politics. <laughs> I like that. Because when I heard, like I told you, when I heard what I heard mm -hmm. yesterday from a high, from that high ranking Kotoko official, I just knew that the usual Kotoko politics would show up. Now we've heard like it. even the board is split on whether Ogum should go or not. You know. And then the club has today the club stated that they've heard all kinds of things. It's not true. The coach is still at work, technically. So by next week. We'll figure out whether he goes or stays. But you see, I wonder how and why clubs always want to get to this point, especially two of our biggest teams. Mm. Every time things are going well, we wake up and say, hmm, today what can we do to cause people to talk about us? Okay, let's fight. Then we do it. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we do this? So now as I say, because I heard of a very crucial season, now I have to figure this thing out would they bring somebody I'm, I'm in? I'm actually surprised they managed to win the league with all this going on. Well, thumbs up to them. Mm. And, and thumbs up to them. Yeah, and just just to add, so from the structure, I think the Wise King named the board, and then the board have named the management. Man yes. Team. Management appointed the, the management coach. appointed the coach. It's too cumbersome, isn't it? <laughs> it's too bureaucratic. It's too much. And in 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 that, everyone is speaking. So the board is speaking. Yep. Management and when you go to Kotoko, actually, you, like, and, and just from what Colin said, you can deduce the kind of politics. So even within the management, people have taken sides. Exactly. I, I, I think it's, I think that's the, the wise king probably thought of that structure so that the club can run almost on its own. You, you get what I like mean? Like a proper Yes, it doesn't entity. have to be the one reaching in to be rearranging chairs and tables, that kind of thing. But, but if that's the case, then yeah. I, I get you. I mean, it's very common. I mean, I don't have a problem with board management. I just have a problem with everyone speaking. So if yeah. Kotoko want to speak... Yeah. Because every who is because, speaking, speaking, because who is exactly because Kotoko. because that's the thing every big club has <laughs> has a board out there but you don't hear board members getting directly Imagine involved a board in member player situations. speaking and then management member also Counter saying attack, different another thing. board member somebody on another platform somebody speaking to daily man. graphic man. Yeah. Man. nobody's in charge if nobody's in charge nobody's in charge and for me look I have done my own homework whatever meeting they are going to be in just a waste of time the man is gone. <laughs> so you mean it won't happen? No, no, it won't happen. We know him personally. Mm. He's not that sort of person. If you listen to Atapoku very well, mm -hmm. you just said that yeah. we are all shocked that all these things were going on. And they still managed, managed to win, win the, league. the league. It tells you who was. And, Atapoku, and we didn't hear any of these yes, things until the season proper ended. Proper management staff from the coach. Atapoku did say that he, he all these things were going on, but he was able to manage and rally the play. Look, when you are a coach eh, and mm -hmm. your players are owed salaries, Five months. So it's not easy yeah. governizing these guys to play for you. If your workers are owed five months. Is it easy to get them to work? Exactly. So if he could do that mm -hmm. and get them to win the league yeah. for Kotoko, it tells you who he is as a person. 
And I'm not sure that for all those who who is very close to the man. Yeah. Look, I, I, I was with somebody who is very close to the man yesterday. And the person called the man and I happened to be privy to the conversation. It's a decision he's thought through. He, he didn't just wake up for somebody of that kind. Yeah, I mean, if you qualify a team for Africa and you say you are walking away, that's a, that's Yes, a he didn't just wake up and say, come on. But like Atamoku did say again, it's been going on. It's been going on for some time now. Yeah. It's been going on for some time now. And if there's no cordial relationship between mm -hmm. the one who appointed the coach, the one who brought the coach on board. No, no, I'm went brought all the prosper. way. Brought Prosper. So if you are the appointing master, and then and now and I'm working for you, and we don't see eye to or, eye. Eye, yeah. to eye. There's no proper chemistry between the two of us. It's better that, that I work part ways. Let me just let me just stay on, and I'll come to Daniel just quickly. There's an issue that I think has arisen out of this. So there's the there's the mistrust from the side of the board and management on Odum's judgments when it comes to players, and then there's Odum also on one side saying that, well, you gave me these materials, and I won you the league. So why don't you trust my judgment to bring in more players? Where do you think? There are those who say that, well, coaches are conflicted in a way because coaches don't bring in transfers purely for football reasons. They might be affiliated to the player in one way or the other. There are those who also say that Kotoko as a board have a way or must have a hand in player acquisition one way or the other. I, I don't know you where see, you stand on look, this matter. It is only in this country where people who know nothing about coaching thinks that because of their position in the club, they have the right to say, you pick this player or we bring this player to you. Now, if a coach say, bring me this player and the player comes, the Amankunan issue is not due to lack of sort of misunderstanding. That has got nothing to do with football reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, whether he, whenever he was given his chance to play, maybe tactically he was not responding. And the coach had to come in there and try and fix the problem. It didn't go down well with the player. But of course, we've learned so many examples out there. The man you, Jose Moreno Pogba, perfect example. As a club, you will take a stand. But I believe that in issues like this, you have to back the manager. You have to stay with the manager because he's brought the group together. Yeah. And you cannot tell me that because of one player, you are telling me that Prosper's judgment on who... He wants as a player and who should leave should be questioned. No, it shouldn't be. I, because at the end of the day, he recommended the player. The player came, okay, he's not done well. Get rid of him. But, That's but easier it is said than done. No, see, but, but guys, it is no, the no, coach's no, story when it comes to players. Hmm. After all, right. his job is on the line. Yeah. If the team goes out there and they don't perform, who do we sack? The coach. the coach that is sacked. So if you say, I don't need him. Get, I understand there's the issue of maybe we, we paid a lot of money for him. so much money. I don't Perhaps we've not even finished paying for him and you want to get rid of him. Maybe you, you could loan him out. Eh? Mm. And get somebody and monitor. If he does well and he's going, you go and reap whatever you spent on him. But at the end of the day, look, CEOs, management members, club owners, they should accept the basic truth that they are not coaches. They should stay away from technical and tactical matters <laughs> and concentrate on administrative issue. Hmm. When it comes to who, because look at Prosper. He cannot be waking up every morning because that's the nature of his job. Mm -hmm. Go and train his team morning, afternoon, evening train. And when it comes to who he should pick for game pick them people are, Look, Atapoku didn't want to say something. He, he was being very diplomatic. He was being very diplomatic. Yeah. There are but, times in Kotoko where the management members have gone to the coach to ask him, why is this player not playing? Is that your job? No, your <laughs> job is to pay the people, work and raise money and pay them. You are not paying them. You are rather questioning the coaches. Yeah, you want to make a quick report before I, I go to Daniel. I completely, I, I do agree mm -hmm. with Chris and I'm not one for interference and everything. But as all of this has played out, you find that in our own little context in Ghana here, I don't know about other countries, in Ghana you find that Sometimes the people who own the teams or the people who run the teams seem to have an interest. Whatever it is, they are interested parties. Everything they do, right, may, may be, for example, for the benefit of the team. I know teams where, Ben, decisions have been left to the manager. And of course, you will have to leave the decision to the manager. And ultimately, things haven't worked well. And sometimes, in some cases, you have some people in management who 
just want to make us not this is not necessarily impose players. They shouldn't act. But don't say don't Chris, do that. hold on, hold on. But say that, that look, maybe you need to look at things from a different perspective. Try this guy or if it is said it's like that, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, the point I want just want to make is this. You need to understand, and like I said, I'm not one for interference. But sometimes you look at people, for example, people who own teams and are mm-hmm. very closely tied to their teams. Sometimes, because they have their own stake, there's emotion and everything involved. They, they feel that. Coach. <laughs> they, <should laughs> just so, coach. they feel that if you are allowed, essentially, if we leave everything in your hands, mm-hmm. things may not. Well, and sometimes somebody, somebody, somebody may have Please, a they, good if idea. If you say leave everything in in the hands of the coach, yes. The everything I guess you are referring to the coaching, the selection. That is the coach's yeah, I job. That. I'm saying that if you look at our context where sometimes you have owners who are very, very linked and very emotionally invested. So I'm not saying that coaches should hand over the reins. No. I'm only saying that sometimes they, they should, should be have open to li- Yes, they open should be to open suggestions. because sometimes some of these suggestions no, let, let me take another let me take another who is not a coach. Mm-hmm. No coach should accept yeah. any suggestion from any of them. So you know take what's, your team. You know what solves this whole issue in a very proper run football club. It's a director of football. That's ah. it. So in 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 Kotokostan, which is a team of the century and massive in Ghana and Africa, coaches will come and go. Before Ogum there was a coach, after him there will no, be yeah. a coach. Kotoko need to take a stand on the kind of football they want to play, the kind of players they'll be recruiting. Mm-hmm. So when the director of football who's, who then is in charge of or recruiting, a technical director. Or a technical director and, uh, that's how you call it in this part of the world. But so Tottenham is a classical example. Daniel Levy used to run everything. But they've brought in Fabio Paratici now. That's it. And he's now in charge of recruitment mm. mm-hmm. and playing. So Kotoko, to solve that issue of just get yourself a sports manager or coach who wants to do this. Kotoko, everybody brings players player. who so that's the problem. The board yeah. member yeah. to ah. manage. So, so, so you see why we go mm. one step forward and two, two steps, steps back. Because there time. are ways to address these mm. things. Mm. Mm. Let me take Daniel's thoughts on Look, everything I, that's I, been going to tie together for us. I, I, don't, I, don't think it's that, I don't think it's that simple, especially in this part of the world. I don't think it's that simple to say the coach should be the only one in charge of recruitment. Because we, we understand the terrain. We know and we understand the terrain. We know that coaches are also linked to players. They also have their own interest. And if you own a football club in this part of the, this part of the world, I don't think it's smart enough to leave your entire recruitment to a, to a head coach who could easily easily recruit players based on interest. Easily. Because we've seen it happen several, several times in different, different clubs. But there are very few yeah. Ghana Premier League or Ghana coach, Ghanaian based coaches who coach a team and don't have their own players exactly. in there. Yeah. Exactly. It's they, very rare. They are all linked to various agencies and players and whoever. We, and we know it. So, I don't think it's, it's fair to say solely the coach should be in charge or, of these things. If, if, there's a, if there can be a working relationship between the management and the coach, fine. So is he, my, my problem... Or you could let him, let him finish. Or uh-huh. you could have a coach who probably hasn't scouted extensively. And there could be somebody else who has that wider pool of knowledge and could be offering that. Yeah. I don't know. My, my, hmm. my problem is, is how quickly the relationship deteriorated. Because we know... Nanaya, the management committee appointed the head coach. Yeah. So you appointed a head coach for him to do a certain job for you. At the start of the season, you sat down, you put a list together of players that you thought will fit your system. They got you some, they didn't get you some. By the end of the day, the objective for the season was achieved. You won the league. And you won the league quite easily. I feel f- on, that, on, on that particular point, you can tell that both the management and the head coach all have the best interest of the club at heart. The coach wanted to win the league. The management committee wanted to win the league. They sat down. They worked together. They were able to win. Yes, there were circumstances in which, which were not the best in terms of their working relationship. But this is where they've reached. I don't think it is... It's both, both parties have erred, honestly, because you hear stories of um, Fabio Gama, the reason why he's leaving, and we all saw it during the season, where it was quite clear that he was not going to fit into what... Um, Prosper Ogum was doing at the club. And this is somebody that Kotoko really valued as a, t- as a club. Before um, um, Prosper came in, Fabio Gama was there. There were spells where we thought he was yeah. even injured. He was their best player. Then yeah, they come in, they are paying him a lot of money. Yeah, he didn't start the season because he was injured. But when he came into the, into the running, he just wasn't getting enough playing time. And at the end of the day, they've lost him. So if you're a management member and you are thinking on this tangent where we brought in this guy thinking that he could be part of this club for the next three, four, five years. Yeah. 
And after two seasons, or basically after one good season, his second season didn't go too well with the head coach. And now the head coach is also leaving. And the player is leaving because the head coach wasn't allowing him to play. It can These things can all play together. You also look at the Amankuna I don't think it's, it's that simple to say, yes, he didn't succeed, so just loan him out. They paid quite an amount of money. And they are paying him some huge wages. He was like the marquee signing. He won 50,000 exactly. CDs. He's like the marquee signing. That's a lot of money. Prosper Ogum. And Prosper Ogum puts a lot of pressure on the management to get him that particular player. So if I go out of my way and I get to that particular player, mm. I'm supposed to see a certain level of result coming out of that player. If I'm not seeing it, it's not just as simple as that to say at the end of the season, okay, fine, I don't want him again. Then I'll look at you and ask you if because you're like, you know, he, they might not even have finished paying exactly, for the player. Exactly, exactly. And you see, yes, Kotoko is Kotoko, but this is Nanado's economy. Look, we, everybody says, <laughs> no, seriously, we know that money is not as quick and easy to come by as it used to be or whatever yeah. the case is. So yes, if a club dishes out that amount of money and pays for a certain player because you insist on everything that you need that player, we should see that that player is a huge part of what you are doing. But if you look at the key players who were part of or at the center of what Ogum did, they were basically players that were recruited by the management committee. So you see, they, they, have, a, they have cases. Mm -hmm. They have a case. He also has a case. My, my point is, they, for me, I just feel it's, it's too... Lions who were managing a certain or working together, and at a point in time, too many cooks in yes, the kitchen. Too That's many. Too many. And at a point in time, the, the relationship with Barry means yeah. deteriorated. But I, honestly, I, yeah. going for it, I feel like they, they had something good with this man. They, they had did. something good. I mean, with if you can win a league with all this turmoil, with all this turmoil, and look, what? they need to find somebody who is better than him. Look, you have to do that. Would be hard. That would be hard. That would be very difficult be because, look, they, have, be they also him. need to understand that Africa yeah. is coming. Yep. They can't just go up and, and make the numbers in Africa. This is Kumasi Asante Kotoko. They need to go and, and make a name for themselves. The last time they were in Africa, I think they went to the group stages of the um, Andasiki Akono. Yeah. They went to the group stages of the Confed Cup. They need to go and do something of that sort. And in order to do that, you need a head coach who is at a, who is at a certain level yeah in terms of experience to be able to do that. So yeah. it, it didn't have to end this way, yeah. but it has. I think both management and the, and the head coach also need, and they also have lessons to learn from this, this experience. But um, look, we understand the politics that comes with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Some of these things will never go away. It is, it is Kotoko. The biggest clubs in the world have all these things <laughs> happening there. That's why they are the biggest clubs in the world. But I don't think it, did, it didn't have to end this way. So, but there are lessons I, to I just think that, again, we can blame Prosper all we want. But I need the Kotoko management and Kotoko as an organization to look themselves in the mirror. You know why? No, why because you, Kotoko... Why say you do, no, no, coach, listen to this. They need to look themselves... The no, I'm not blaming... No, but you see, you see, there's never a situation... I'll, I'll say this, look. There's never a situation that is solely one person's fault. It's course, never ever exactly. like that. So but, Prosper has to take his own blame for it. I don't think... I don't think he's, he's blameless in this. I don't think he's the antagonist in this as well. But I'm just saying that the end of the matter is that Kotoko... Couldn't work with Maxwell Kunedu beyond the year he had to go. They had Barreto. He said all he yeah. said all kinds of is nasty is things on his way out. In fact, if you some of the things Barreto said, I can't even repeat them on this mm -hmm. show. Kotoko had no problem with Maxwell Kunedu. Well, it was Nana Yam. Who didn't want to work? Who didn't want to work? Want to so work okay, so again, Kotoko, no. exactly. No, but I mean, he's a Maxwell was club. appointed by the board. By the board, and yeah, exactly. He, and we then, know that exactly. he's not in good so, terms. So, with so, the it board is, so it is literally so the same thing I'm talking about. This Maxwell just played three games. Three games. So it's all this boardroom politics, yeah. management politics. That it it got Konedu out. Barreto didn't want to stay because he thought the environment yeah. wasn't yeah. good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Prosper yeah. has come and won you a league and taken you to Africa and still doesn't think the money, the, the condition is good enough. So clearly. There is a common denominator. That's all I'm and saying. The and common denominator is the management who is always fighting with the coaches. And also, it's the just, common just, denominator. Just, I mean, you're Ben, just to add, and I think mm -hmm. that Kotoko need to look at their contract also, the ones they offer yes, to their managers. You gave uh, uh, this uh, Brise boy two-year contract. He came, you you didn't pay money for him. He Fabio, put in the Fabio. clause that when you serve and go, when you say, Me, I'm a Portuguese, I speak Portuguese, I'm going, I won't extend the contract. Hey, he's going to, uh, they, they say he's going where? Bahrain. Bahrain. Hey, I crunch it, Papa. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> But if it wasn't, if it wasn't hey, for Fabio Gama, I didn't even know there was football in Bahrain. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, okay. and, and Prosper ah. has been able, to, the fact that Prosper has been able to quit also, it, it, it shows the kind of contract he has because it's rare to see a manager walk old away. enough mm -hmm. to walk away. Yeah. Because then Kotoka can also take him on for termination of contract. Mm -hmm. It's just the same way if Kotoko was to terminate his contract. They also take them on. They have to take him. So they need to look at the way they offer contracts to these because 
he would have looked at the technical and legal aspect and said, okay, listen, I can quit and go away and walk away free. If he has to lose a lot of money, normally what managers do is that they come back and clearly, you know, they've lost their head. And then they force management to fire right. them. Yep. Mm. And then they normally does. So the fact that he's decided to walk away, I think the person who offers the contract. I'm sure there, there's a clause in there that, that allows. allows him to that's that. the, again, that's to the disadvantage of, of the, the club. club. They need yeah. to watch that. Mm. Let me read a few messages coming through and then we'll switch sides a little. Um, this one here says only one Friday 90 minutes sports show. Um, people's um, 40 hours for show in a week. That's this covenant, Jay. Because this one says, Ben, the way you introduce my man, I know they feel cry. Why are you leaving out the wolf oh, man in man. Oh, Charlie? Does he still go by the <laughs> name? Like, that... Of course, yeah, Charlie. Charlie, see, this is there. There, me, 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 and Baba Raman drive through town, go by some church. We go by church, Charlie. We just, Charlie, we just roll glass small. Nobody say we even step out. Oh, Baba Raman, oh Raman, oh smart. No, Charlie, you be starving. <laughs> one bell. We need to. We need to. We one bell ring. We need to add that he was the Centenary Sports Prefect. Oh, hard. Oh, <laughs> let's add that. Charlie, he never. Sports he never used to go without saying Star that. Starboy. You have to add that. He said, Charlie, in those days, I just could nobody. <laughs> Starboy. <laughs> Charlie, hype thing. Let's let's get more. Um, let's get more messages. Um, this one is from Abensio from Spintex. Oh, oh Charlie. Charlie. See, I read your message. Oh, Charlie. Purely because of your name, Abensio from Spintex. He says Kulibali and Van Dyke are of the same age. No, they are not, bro. <laughs> so why are you people saying Koulibaly is old and cannot survive in the Premier League? Check your numbers again. They are not the same age, fam. This one here is from <laughs> Bayano of Newtown. Um, he says, the Ekutia prayers from coach alone, they kill me. Anyway, Ben, <laughs> Tali, my instinct is telling me that Liverpool have just signed an original photocopy of Andy Kaolo. No strings attached anyway. I won't mention any name. Just do your own deductions and you know who I'm referring to. Um, this one here says, a club as big as Kotoko Badly managed this coach, Ogum Saga. A day after the supposed resignation came out, a member of Kotoko's management, who is a radio sports presenter in Accra, used the whole hour to attack, insult, and incite fans against the coach. How can a huge brand as Kotoko make um, this person who insults and attacks F uh, FA Black Stars coaches every afternoon a management member? Okay. This one here is good evening, guys. Um, Ogum rather wanted 10 players out and 17 in. I think we established that. Kofi from Koforidia. Says, oh, Charlie, Chelsea have now have Kunde, Kulibali, and Thiago. You know, be small, Kokoti, defense <laughs> of the build. Kunde, Kulibali, and Thiago. Kokoti. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, I'm going home. I will, I will, I will, I will host the show again. I'm going home. It's okay. Everybody should go home. Ah, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Tali, we have for this TV for somebody say Fernando Po. Right now, where Fernando Po day? Fernando Po, right now, it's Fernando Pe. Uh, <laughs> no, Tali. Don't kill me, Coco D. Coco D. Hey, guys, you know what me and Toko, they say, they say Kunde Kulibali and Thiago is equal Coco to Coco T. You know what me talk. This one, it says, Coach Prosper is running away from the CAF Champions League humiliation. He doesn't want to take it. Seven goals to take from... Seven, seven goals to take over from Buedu six. But <laughs> Obuakra, he will go to Africa before he resigns. <laughs> Mr. Sari from Apollonia. <laughs> they, they, they say by force, you go coach the team. <laughs> Ebenezer from Nungwa says, Arsenal, with the signings we've made so far, we are going to do better than last season. Gabriel Jesus will outperform the rest of the strikers um, signed by other EPL clubs. Bellyman inside Tema says that I pray Ronaldo doesn't stay at United because Bruno scored 28 goals before Ronaldo came. We were in the Champions League uh, before Ronaldo came to dump us in Europa League. 28 goals and UCL. <laughs> Charlie, you know, say 28 goals and UCL is better than 24 goals and Europa. I retire being a Ronaldo fan. You were never truly a fan anyway if you are retired. That, that's the honest truth. Farouk, Farouk headliner from Lakeside says that I so much agree with Ogum's resignation. I mean, they were setting up the environment for him to fail. All the best players are being sold and yet we expect miracles at Africa. Things do not work that way. We Chelsea fans welcome Jules Kunde to the best club in London and the world. Um, this one here says that um, if it's true, if it's really true, Prosper wanted 17 ins and 10 outs, he should be sat down and slapped with both hands. I don't even know why everybody's no. making a big deal out of it. No, he, he, he didn't want People are even make, See, I've been in this country what since... What is that? I've watched... See, coaches... In, in fact, there are times where teams have offloaded close to 10 players, just the second round of the league, just yes. heading into the second round, and brought in another 10. It's not something that hasn't is happened. It, no, but he, it happens. Uh, 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 Ogum, it, it must be put on record. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't want 17 players. He's asked them to let go of 10. Mm -hmm. And then he's presented a list of 17. 
with first choices and second choices. That so it's these are my first choices. If you don't get this, get this get one this for one. me. That is the way it works. So it's been, it's been put out of context. Exactly. Then. Exactly. So let me read a few more. Charlie, Charlie, listen, listen to the, the name. Okuti, the boat driver who chills riders right AC. AC. Oh, Charlie! <laughs> ah! Oh, Charlie! Now I had to read. See, the name, they beat too much. Okuti, the <laughs> boat <laughs> driver who chills riders right AC. AC. Nah, <laughs> Charlie, this guy be hard. <laughs> too much Okuti! He says, good evening to you and the crew, Ben. Kudos to Coach Ogun for winning the league with such toxicity. Looks like in Ghana, nothing good appears nice in the eyes of most board members. You have Champions League ahead of you. Then this? He's not going back, I believe. He'd be hard guy rough. Now United, a machine. <laughs> Finally, it's from Ben from Tema. He says, let's ask ourselves. Did the players Nanaya and Bonsa bring in perform or not? Did the players the coach recommended himself perform well or not? You've asked a question. Well, big questions. Like I said, um, there's some track and field happening at dawn today. There's the relay 4x100 happening. There's also Deborah Aqua uh, in the long jump. I'll, let, I'll just give Daniel just a few minutes on that and then we'll do some transfers real quick. Daniel, just touch on our performances so far at the World Championships and then what's to come in the relays before we do some don't call me real quick. So far, it's not been too good. Everybody has gone out in the heats. Um, Alex Amankwa, 800 meters, was disqualified. Um, for what, honestly, was a rookie mistake. Rookie, rookie mistake. If you run 800 meters, I, I don't remember the last time I saw something like that. It, it, it hardly ever happens. And unfortunately for him, it did happen to him. As Amati also went out in the 100 meter heats. Um, uh, Joe Paul went out in the 100 meter and 200 meter heats. So it's not, it's not gone too well for us. And when you look at their individual performances, in their various um, disciplines, and you look at the times, you look at what they've done this year in, in the relay, and you compare it to what others are doing, you don't really have too much confidence going into the relays later tonight. Um, we are the lowest ranked <laughs> team in terms of time, um, in the, all the teams competing um, at the relays. Um, and it's, it's, look, it's honestly not looking too good, but I always say that in the relays, anything can happen. We saw what happened in, in the Olympic Games where um, the USA was disqualified in Ghana's heats. That yeah. made us qualify to the finals for the first time, I think, since um, 96. <clears throat> um, so things like this can happen. But it's not... When you sit down here and you hope for miracles like that, it, doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> it really shows the, the state, the state of, your, of, your, of your track and field team. And that is not the best. The thing is that we need to do a lot more going forward. A lot more, not just in terms of the athletes that we have presently. We need to put put forward a plan that will reap the benefits in the future. We honestly need to do so because I don't think it's, it's, it's not helpful to sit here be just before every major competition and then think and ask yourself what the, the, the guys presently are going to do without um, putting in the work to make sure that the, the, the results will come. Um, frankly speaking, it's not necessarily the, um, the state's job to, to, to fund their personal <coughs> training through and through, but they can put some certain measures in place to make sure that at least we have a core of, of guys with, with the proper basics and then when they turn professionals, they can take care of some of these things themselves so that when the big competitions come, we know that at least we'll have Ghanaians in the final stages because it's a bit embarrassing if you look at what is going on. You look at the Nigerians, there were countless number of them in, in various disciplines. You look at the fact that even a Kenyan is one of the leading um, sprinters in the world. How often do you find Kenyans, and Kenyans yeah. in the sprint? And you can just tell that a lot more people are putting in the work. You look at the Southern Africans in terms of South Africa, you look at Botswana and cool like that. When you when you watch what they are doing in, in the sprints and in the athletics all through and through, you can tell that these guys are sat down, they've put their plan in place and they are making sure that they'll reap the benefits. But um, aside, in fact, uh, if you put Ghana away, there are, are records to be broken. If you look at what the individual stars yeah. have been doing, this is probably one of the best world championships we've had since post boat. You look at what uh, Sherika Williams did in the uh, Sherika Jackson did in the in the women's two hundred meters. Yeah. Um, after Flo Joe, she's the second fastest. Ale, woman I saw some ever, and that is absolutely crazy. I saw some meme that's very crazy. People need to stop these things. <laughs> I, I don't know if you've seen it. There's some. I don't know if it's like a grim reaper. Mm -hmm. They say they say Flojo when she realizes that Sharika has run the faster time, so she's basically chasing and Sharika <laughs> through some kind of hospital. <laughs> the Twitter no, is very dark. Look, it's it's, it's it's absolutely crazy. And if you look at the times that especially the women have been posting from late last year, yeah. from the Olympics, you look at um, uh, 
the woman who did the, the yeah, Thompson Hera. Yeah. What Thompson Hera did in the 100 and 200 in the Olympics, and then after the Olympics, she's now the second fastest woman in 100 meters behind Flo Jo, very close to that record. I think she did 10.51 or something like that, or 10.5. You look at what she, uh, Sherika has done just yesterday, very close to the record. And even Noah allows in the men's 200 meters, a lot of people are not talking about that record, but what he did was to break... 26 um, years. Yeah, a 26-year-old record. Yeah. In fact... That was the record using both Brook in the yeah. 2008 Beijing Olympics. And then he went on to break it again in the 2009 World Championship. Using both time is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. 19.19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Hey! It's, oh, it's almost impossible. What? That's, I don't that's, see anybody that, breaking that. That's, that. that's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Nobody ever thought that would be broken. But the year Bolt broke that record, the following year, he set a new, new one. Man, and then yeah. in 2011, Blake, came and, Blake came and broke the record that nobody thought would break. The fact is that when somebody does so it, now people who, start training... Who has the, the mindset that is is brand up? Yeah, both still holds that. Nineteen point one nine looks very untouchable. If you look at the time these guys are making, yeah. 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 But if you look at what Noah Lyles did, yeah, the there's three, still room yeah, for improvement. The three fastest times. Noah did what? Um, nineteen point one nine. Nineteen three one. Three. He did nineteen three one. Nineteen three one. And both record is nineteen point one nine. You mean nineteen point two three? No more now. Can break in the goal. Yeah, no, no. Is that, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's yeah, nothing. I there's possible. nothing impossible to understand. If, if you look, if but you look I, I think it will take monumental efforts. It will, but in fact, the person I even think will break it is a guy who finished it. Who is this? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. He's okay. eighteen years old. And he doesn't have long legs like that. He does. He's actually tall. He's look. He's perfect for it. He's absolutely. You mean he's built yeah, to you break the record? You can just tell that. So he's telling to break the two hundred record. It was. It was. It. It's, it's his temperament that let him down at the Olympics and here also. You could so tell he's that not he in his prime yet. He's not in his prime yet. He's yeah, now starting and he's already doing yeah. um, sub-19 seconds for, for fun. But look, there's a lot of hope in the track and field. Look, when Bolt re re retired, we all thought he was dead and gone. But yeah. this particular championship, what we saw in the Olympics... Jamaica yeah, need to worry about their male sprinters, though. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. their male sprinters are dying out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. look, there's, there's, there's a lot of hope. But tonight, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at the US. Well... Ah, well, there's but definitely no, but they definitely need to replenish their talent. It's definitely running down real quick. Well, let's let's change directions because um, interceptions FC look like they hey! really intercepted something. Let's get into it. A don that was so is don't come time. Now on time she goes a piece of ghost. Now on who yet drinks a tevex. And if you coach one come at home, a don that was so. Don't come yo, don't come. Let's go. It's don't come me time. Don't come yo, don't come. It's don't come me time. Don't come yo, don't come. Catch that. Tina Boka. Don't come yo, don't come. Catch that. It's don't come me time. A don that was so. It's don't come me time. One place, May, for sale, one tonne cheap. Don't come yo, don't come me. We did loan this player a thousand dollars. Don't come yo, don't come me. For the striker, we can consider. Don't come yo, don't come me. No, they see you use. Tina Boka, don't come yo. So, ghosts are sense of tourists. Now, one time, she goes a piece of ghosts. Now, on one year, drinks a Tevex. And if you coach, you can't come at home. A don that was so. Don't call me, yo, don't call me. Let's go. It's don't call me time. Don't call me, yo, don't call me time. It's don't call me time. Don't call me, yo, don't call me. Catch that. Tina Boka. Don't call me, yo, don't call me. Don't call me, yo, don't call me. Don't call me, yo. Medase. Let's get into it and let's get to the camp of Chelsea Football Club. Charlie, Todd Bowley. A.K.A. owner, A.K.A. part-time CEO, A.K.A. sporting director, A.K.A. scout. Wearing multiple hats at Chelsea, getting the business done. So according to, um, of course, the famous one, Fabrizio Romano, he is saying that the deal has been tied up. Um, it's what, £55 million, five-year contract. And uh, they say that Chelsea have already handed Sevilla the contract. The only thing that was holding this up is that Jules Kunde was also hoping to go to Broke FC. Oh, Barcelona. what is this? Team where they not get money where everybody won't play. I don't understand what's that's, going that's, on. That's what you call a big team. You mean class is permanent? Thank you. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> hmm. Well, it looks like Chelsea will get their man and it looks like they will get him for considerably cheaper 
than they initially thought. In, in, in the beginning, I think Sevilla were holding out for something around 80 million yeah, or so. Awesome. Yeah, so now they say 55 million pounds, five-year deal. Let me start off with you, Raman, on this one because uh, you are following the activities of Todd Bowley closely. <laughs> how, how much was this a Marina Lampard, I mean, um, wish? I mean, because... I, I did say that Chelsea have been following this guy for quite a long time. It wasn't time. Lampard. That one I can tell you. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you, are you trying to say Lampard doesn't have eye for oh, good Lampard, Lampard wanted, wanted Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky. Yeah. And recently he said it. He repeated it. Oh, Lampard. Like, like Charlie, he was, he was completely given a bloodbath by Minnesota FC. 4-0. Hey, but the Lampard. Time Tark Tarkovsky was knocking on the English door. No, though. Tarkovsky was actually yeah, serious. Yeah. By the time Lampard wanted him, he was washed. No, no, but Tarkovsky, he's never been a top top. Ah, sure. Let me get that. Let me get that. Tarkovsky. Jimmy Tarkovsky. Juice is also bad. Rama, yeah, just quick, quick thoughts on this pursuit of Kunde and um, now that they look like they are getting it over the line, what do you think? Don't go me or not? Yeah, don't go me. I mean, they need defenders. Christensen is going to Barcelona. Um, Rudiger is going to Real Madrid and then even Cesar Spilicueta might leave because yeah. even though he's extended his contract, there's still Barcelona um, who are offering a longer term and he's looking at his age now. It's quite interesting because of the fact of the um, the way Chelsea set up with the three at the back. Obviously, they need big, tall, technically gifted centre-backs and they've gone on to sign Khalidu, who I like a lot. I actually think the signing was like maybe two years late because two years the Khalidu one yeah Khalidu one yeah. That, like because there was a time I was in the same power with Van Dijk because yeah. they had the was, same yeah. physique the same height and even the reputation in terms of yeah the was the same in the last two years his, his profile has gone a bit down but he's coming to the Premier League he's coming to a, a team where he'll be profiled a bit more Jules also coming in and looking at going to the World Cup with yeah. France and the fact that he'll be playing at Chelsea he has a prominent role and I'm told that the project that was sold to him was that he was going to be the center of the three back that they would play. And then they all is cemented by the experience of Thiago Silva and and Thomas Tuchel is he's 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 shown that his his signings can come in, especially defenders and, and go on. So it's for me it's an intriguing signing. He's young, he's technically gifted, comes at a good price also, like you rightfully said, and there's space for him and room for him to improve. Chelsea's a very difficult club, though, to play in. I can tell you that most of the English teams, mm -hmm. maybe Arsenal and City and all that, you can go. But Chelsea, you need character. There's been some really big players that have gone to Chelsea. And they, they are used to winning. And they are used to winning. The fans demand winning. Yeah. And and I say this all the time. For I see a lot of games at Stamford Bridge. It's not your most conducive place to watch football. If things are not going well, the fans will let you know. So it's not like what, what, what is it like? Are the fans extra close to the pitch? Can you hear the trash yeah, talking yeah, from the fans? Yeah, old. Stamford Bridge is quite really old stadium, very small, and they like a bit of a banter. They like sarcasm, and so if 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 you're really good, they'll let you know. Like when Rudiger was really good, anytime he touched the ball, the whole stadium will go roo, roo. and it lifts the player. The opposite can happen. Uh, there have been times where Alonso <laughs> has misplaced the pass, and they let him know. They don't like that. And that's the that's Chelsea for them. They're, they've been spoiled. And the next few years will tell us what will happen because they had a man, they had an owner who didn't care about profit. He cared about winning. He didn't care to sack a manager after maybe three games and, uh, and bring in another one. They didn't care how much it cost and they'll pay a lot of money for him. Times have changed. Todd is American. His consortium is American. It's all about profit. So they'll bring in players. The fans will have to accept and you can easily even tell with the way they are going about with the players they are buying that it's kind of a different approach to what Roman used to do. But Jules is an interesting one, and I, I definitely see that he will get a lot of chance to, to play under Tuchel. Mm, a lot of chance. Let me go to you, Daniel. Uh, you've not spoken a lot today. Just quick thoughts on the Jules Kunde transfer. I don't know how, how you feel about it. What, what do you think he brings to this table that is different from what they already have? And why have they pursued him for, too, for so long? I like him, especially in a three-back. Especially in a three-back, I don't think his height would necessarily necessarily be a problem. I think he carries the ball very well. He's very comfortable with the ball. He has a good passing range, and he's strong. He's strong. Um, he has a very low center to, uh, to gravity. Very difficult to, to, to take off the ball, and I like players. Somebody who has that much height, he's yeah. actually very strong. Yeah. And, and he's um, very quick as well. Yeah, and he also has the ability to play as a right-back, so... Um, offers that tactical flexibility if you want to switch a system mid-game or whatever whatever the case is. He has the ability to give you that. And age is also on his side. So 
I, I, I like it. If you look at the balance with which they have in or what they have in the, the three back right now, with you look at Jews, you look at them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Tiago Silva, you look at Koulibaly. The Kukuti. Te- the Kukuti, exactly. You can tell there's <laughs> no, a lot the, of balance. Let, let, let us not forget that name combo. I love it. <laughs> Koulibaly, Kunde, <laughs> and Tiago Kukuti. Kukuti. You go here for this show top. Oh. The, 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 the balance is good. And, and that is what you need. That is what you want um, going into a, a, a campaign like this. But look, trust me, Chelsea have serious problems. And the scary thing is that most of their fans don't know that they have serious problems. I'm... First, the, the thing that hits me straight away is the fact that they don't have a, a goal scorer in their team. Mm-hmm. That is why they went for Lukaku. Lukaku is gone. They've not replaced Lukaku. And they are yeah. somehow convincing themselves that Havertz will be the guy to give them that 20, 25 plus goals. It's not going to happen. He's a sort of like a, 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 your, your second highest goal scorer. He's like a supporting striker in terms of responsibility. I still think they need to go out and, and get somebody who can get them the goals. Or getting players in the attacking area who can share the, the responsibility. Yes, Sterling has come in, but Chelsea don't create as much as Man City. It means yeah. Sterling's poor finishing may come to bear at, at, at Chelsea. I think they need another forward in there because Timo Werner is not the guy. Pulisic is clearly not the guy. Ziyech was never the guy. And um, they, they, look, they, they seriously need to strengthen that forward area because we saw Chelsea. They created tons of chances last season. Um, yeah, there were no games that they were supposed to have won after like f- 50 minutes. Even the Brentford game that they lost 4-1. If you watch that game, Chelsea should have killed that game by the first half. They didn't do it. In the second half, they started very well. They scored one goal. All of a sudden, boom. Um, Brentford have, have, have picked them apart. But now they fixed that defense. I think they need to go out and, 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 and strengthen that that forward area or I don't see any sound improvement from them in fact the way I'm looking at things I'll not be surprised as it stands if the league starts today with the clubs um, having the squads that they have presently I think Chelsea will be the ones to drop out of the top four Hmm. big statement there let's go to another transfer Um, it's generating quite uh, some let's let's stay on Chelsea now guess what Nathan our favourite player Alan say Maxima. Oh, that has emerged. That's what he said. He has emerged, and I'm just down telling it now because Daniel spoke about building the front line. Saint Maxima has been approached by Chelsea, according to reports that I'm seeing. Um, the club is set to open up a bid uh, for for the player. I I don't know uh, Saint Maxima to Chelsea. No, Does that make I, any I, sense? I, I, I think if it, it turns out to be true and Chelsea does make an approach, I think that Saint Maxima will be very eager. To, to go, he will be very, very eager to try his skills and his talent at, at that higher level. And, he can't and finish, though. Well, he, he doesn't have to be the one to finish. <laughs> no, but I don't know. He's don't a winger, think, though. I don't think he's a player. I, in fact, I'm shocked. Yeah. No, but they, they, they look he, like, that is true. true. No, no, but coach, honestly, I'm, speaking, I'm, okay, I, I'll tell you this, so right? If I'm you can buy Hakim Ziyech, you can definitely buy St. Maxima. If Chelsea, because no, but, Hakim Ziyech is see, not on St. Maxima's level. No, but if Chelsea do make an so approach many... for Alan St. Maxima, mm-hmm. he will be happy. So yeah. Now we can look at it in reverse. Okay. Do Chelsea need a player like Alan no. St. Maxima? No. For the player, it will, he would love it. If they, are selling all their, if they are selling all their wingers, isn't it isn't it prudent that they bring in somebody no, like but, him? But the point they is, sell, they're still, I, they will still give Pulisic another opportunity. Oh, but how can you even go into the season depending on Pulisic? I'm just saying. They will Pulisic, if you blow air on him, he will get injured. Is it a shock. They'll give him a shock. If you criticize Pulisic wrongly, he'll get injured. Is it, is it? They'll give him a shock. Cool. They'll give Raheem Sterling clearly going to be probably one of their main men this season. Mm-hmm. I don't know the situation with Hakim Ziyech, whether he's staying or going. If he he's going, if he wants to, then he's clearly not making enough of an effort because the man is still playing preseason matches mm, in the United States. Like that, and I completely agree with Daniel. Chelsea, I think, are overlooking the one most important place they need to look at. Somebody who will bang in the goals. Look, you can't put your hope on Kai Havertz. He's not a bad player. But you don't want to think about a league season where are we going to challenge for the league? Of course we have to challenge. Who is the guy who's going to pass towards the league title? And it's Kai Havertz? Chelsea fans say he's a Rolls Royce. Okay, I, I, Whatever I, it is, I, I, I think Chelsea do need somebody yeah. who they can... Look, somebody you can, you can bet trust. your house on. Like a Diego Costa in back the in the end, day. He's giving you 20. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Roman, just I, I, quick one. I, I remember when Chelsea was playing Madrid, I asked Thomas Tuchel the same thing because at that same time, Lukaku was struggling for goals. And the main reason why they signed Rome was because they wanted somebody. This the same time last mm-hmm. time, somebody who could score the goals. And they went to promise Rome that they were going to change the system 
Because which Roma, he never they, did. They didn't change the system. And that's what really upset Rome. Yeah. Because Rome came in having led Inter to the Serie A title mm-hmm. and banged about 30 plus goals. And they said they wanted to make him the center mm-hmm. yeah. of their attack. And the main reason why they're not scoring goals, and I get that they, they might try to get a striker, is the way they play. That's it. It's, I've it's said this in several it's times here. Okay, so, so essentially you're saying that the setup will not help a number nine. It doesn't. It and doesn't. I asked him personally, and you know what his answer was? Okay. It's like, historically, he said, he, and this is Tuchel speaking, he said, historically, Chelsea is a team that strike is struggle. He, and he even said that. He said, Mataya Kesman and all. He, he went into the history. Yeah, he doesn't. He does, Crespo and things. But let's just put it on record <laughs> that the only number nine to have thrived at Chelsea. He did there. <laughs> the only. The only. The one and only. He did there. <laughs> so it's, 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 it depends. The strikers would then be uh-huh. looking at Chelsea now and say, do I want to go in there? Because Tuchel plays with the handbrakes on. Plays his three, plays another two defenders as wing back. So they rarely concede. And there are people who believe they are set up for cup games. So that's why they do well in Champions League and FA Cups and they can get to the Carabao Cup final, FA Cup. Because mm. in knockout games, yeah. when you get one goal, it's hard to break down. In league games, because it's a marathon, uh, people will eventually find you up. And, so it depends if he wants to go back to four at the back. What that will mean is that Chelsea will not be watertight like they are. Mm-hmm. But is he willing to give a, that a doubt? Take, that's I doubt. Problem. I think Tuchel will stay wedded we'll see, to we'll that three back. We'll and, see how it goes. And from all mm. these comments, it, maybe that's why they are not in a haste to find a Lukaku replacement. Because it looks well, look, like I think the Lukaku experiment clearly will tell Tuchel, you know what, just go back to what you know yeah. and go back to what works. But that will not win him the league. That well, go win him a cup. Oh, but look, <laughs> it is it is looking like uh-huh. Liverpool, Spurs, Man City. and Man City. Why is your own United? You you no, you repose I'm faith coming. in them to finish in the top two. Like, it is looking like in terms of the teams that could forward forward them. players. I mean top strikers. Okay, I get what you mean. Okay, I get what you mean. These I would have front runners. I would have included United if the if Baba was around. The the, the, the most mm-hmm. renowned goal scorer in the history of the game is saying he's going to stay. <laughs> But right now, I don't know whether he's staying or he's leaving. Oh, I listened to Tem Hag today. He said to the plan. situation hasn't changed. He's not for sale. Hey, so let's see how that goes. But it, I, 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 think, I think it is looking like, in terms of those having natural goal scorers in their team, it is looking like Spurs, Man City, and Liverpool are the team to watch. Let's, let's get to another transfer. Charlie, you know a situation is serious when OJ calls me. You know, OJ called me yeah. today. He says, Ben, I'm worried. <laughs> what is going on with our club? Uh-huh. And when OJ says our club, he means City. Manchester City. He's, yeah. he's one of the, the staunchest Manchester City fans you'll find anywhere. OJ is worried that Pep Guardiola is selling everybody. <laughs> is this what is going on at the club? <laughs> well, Manchester City's loss is Arsenal's gain. And that, that the news is that Alexander Zinjenko <laughs> has completed his move. <laughs> 30, <laughs> 30, yeah, <laughs> 30 million pounds <laughs> plus 2 million as, Arsenal in Arsenal looks absolutely spruced for the season. Cool. Yeah. Guys, I, I don't know about you guys. Personally, I think Zinchenko is a, is a technically gifted player. But in the words of coach, Inalo Jogba. Inalo Jogba. Inalo Jogba. Inalo Jogba. Inalo Jogba. Zinchenko. <laughs> Daniel, make a case for Zinchenko. Why is Zinchenko an important signing for Arsenal? Because he's a top left back. Is he even a left back? Ah, but you've seen him under Pep. He's a top left back. Mm. He does the job. Mm. That's the basic thing. Did he do the job for Manchester City? Yes, he did the job. In crunch time, the most important part of their season last season. He was all played the, the, the showed stretch. us a different aspect of his game. His mm. ability to go out, take on defenders, be, be that attacking fullback. He did it and he did it to perfection. He showed the technical ability he has as a midfielder, playing as a left back. Okay, proper left back. He was, hey, he was absolutely excellent. And you see, <laughs> Mas, as now, <laughs> look, went on. Uh, as now have a need. I spoke about it at the tail end of last season, where Tierney mm. practically gets injured half the season. And they had to get a replacement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tavares is not the guy. Yeah. They've gone out, they've got Zin- Zinchenko. Yeah. And that's the sort of headache that every top man has. And he solves multiple position multiple, headaches. Exactly. So I think that's even, the one reason why yeah, I like even, him. Even when uh, um, um, Tierney is fit mm-hmm. and playing, Zinchenko can easily shift in and play in a, in a much more advanced, maybe midfield, central midfield, attacking midfield, whatever the I case is. Midfield three. Exactly. 
But that's a sort of tactical flexibility you want as a big team. That is what he brings you. And he brings you a lot of experience also. He's been at Man City for six years. He's won trophies. He knows how to win. And he has that winning feeling in him. And you need players like that in the dressing room. And he's relatively young too. He's, and he's young. 25. And he's young. So for me, I, I absolutely don't go yeah. These are the sort of Sorry. signings that you expect uh, top teams to do. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, Arsenal, are, Arsenal is now they are the highest spenders. They've got in uh, Jesus. They've got in... Um, Zin 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 <laughs> they've got uh, <laughs> Fabio Vieira and Co. Um, I think the next thing they need to do is to get in that party replacement or party, what they call it, cover. The cover. In, in, Wasn't in, that what Sambi Lokonga was supposed Lokonga to come and do? Oh, that that party was 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 Tali, you can't spend money on, uh, plenty of money on a player like that and tell Sheku, me that he's Sheku. not. No, 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 no. I was chicken change. Hey, Sheku, Sheku, no more. Well, well, that's that's the word. Uh, Raman, I don't know if you want to have something yeah, on yeah, the Zinchenko. Just to add, because yeah. I'm trying to answer what um, OJ was saying. So, in the last five years, City have always spent a lot of money on players. I think they are now trying to balance the books in that they are mm. selling a lot of players with high value. And then they will make signings, but they want to bring their net spend should make sense. Their books should balance. And one of the reasons why a lot of people like Liverpool was that the Liverpool continue, the the continue money was the was deal. used. Oh, the yeah. yeah. Continue yeah. money was huge. And they, they, they brought in Alisson, they brought in Van Dijk, <coughs> and brought in really good players that led them to win the Champions League. And for a lot of the time, people have been saying Pep Guardiola is a checkbook manager. So what City are trying to do now is they're trying to bring in players, but they're trying to bring in players at a certain wage, at a certain financial level, and then they will sell some, and then they can say, okay, we sold these players, we brought in these players, this is the amount of money we... That's how a football club is run. It's meant to run so you can make profit. There are some people who argue that football is business also, mm -hmm. so when it's business, you can actually take a loan yeah. and invest it, and after 10 years, you can make profit from it. But City are at a point where they want to be able to actually show that they are, okay, we are selling. And to be fair, most of these players City are selling, <laughs> excuse me to say, they are, team they are B second team B players. players. They are French right. players. Yeah. yeah, in the last two years, Raheem not played much. Hasn't Zinchenko been comes same. in when Zinchenko they are, comes when they are rotating. When, when they, and yeah. I'll tell you one thing that City paid almost 100 million for Grealish. Last year was his adaptation year. They kind of feel that. He needs to, he he needs needs to, to play work, more yeah. and, and exert. A left back will be signed. So I think Kuku Correa will like be signed at some point. they had an point. initial bit down. Yes. But I think it's a matter asking, of time. Writing yes. is demanding an arm and a leg. <laughs> yes. um, let, let's see how that goes. Let, let's get to the phone lines real quick and let's talk to one of our colleague journalists on the line, Juliet Bewa. Julie Ju. Yeah, Charlie Lady Bag. Julie Ju. Man, you Julie Ju. Lady, <laughs> Lady United Dallow. Julie Ju. United Julie Ju. Oh, Charlie. Oh, my Lord. They say right now, Julie they say, they say right now it'll be Erica Ten Hag. Oh, Charlie. Oh, your former. Julie. Let's talk about your your renowned summit, the Africa Women's Sports Summit. Um, you've had the initial edition. It was a good success. Congrats to you. And everybody who made it a success. It looks like another edition is coming up. For for the uninitiated, what is the Africa Women's Sports Summit all about? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I, I couldn't be in the studio, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, so just like you said, the Africa Women's um, Sports Summit, um, I believe, is a summit that um, seeks to present a platform uh, for mentorship, um, training, and also greater female inclusion in the African sports um, scene, or maybe simply put, the ecosystem. And I remember, in like you mentioned, in 2019, we started this to build a community where um, the African women in sports can tap into most of the enabling opportunities to grow their personal and also career um, goals. It goes hand in hand. You can get like proper personal growth and maybe neglect your um, career goals. So. For us, as um, as Africa Women's Sports Summit, we the way we see it, um, we have an event that is an enabler of um, initiatives that spur the African um, women in sports to, um, most importantly, attain any height they want to. Of course, um, this would also mean bringing them closer and also exposing them to these opportunities and mm. what um, is possible. So. Um, basically, we are building this for the African woman um, who is actively contributing or um, engaged in sports at any level. Juliet, we don't have a lot of time, so I'd I'd okay. like you to 
box in a couple of things at a go. I'm going to ask you a few things. So tell me about one. You've done this for three years. Tell me about the gains you've made. And also tell me about this year's event and what this year's event will be all about. Right. So um, the testimonies um, or the gains are endless. So basically, like, um, we keep getting them from people who have been directly impacted. And three years after we held the first one, we are happy to know that more young women um, say to us that they decided to take their place um, in sports journalism after the 2019 summit. We've mentored over um, thousands of young and also established African women in sports through our special um, speaker sessions and also boot camps, and one of which was led by um, FIFA Secretary General, that is Madam Fatima Samoa, in 2020. We've also provided um, um, sporting equipment and so many other things to the Asaman City Bayern Munich. It's a lower tier division football club in um, the western region of Ghana, which is owned by and also coached by uh, one um, brave woman, I, Madam Patience um, Agri. And this woman has for um, two decades been developing talent on her own with little or no support as well. So the summit. Um, the team came through for her. We've also aided over a dozen of African women through um, referral opportunities with partner organizations. In the coming years, we hope to do more. We hope to take some of them through school and all that. And um, this year, like you mentioned, um, we are looking at um, be the change and the leadership. We want to um, settle on um, sports leadership in Africa and building stronger institutions because it is just about the right time for us to do that. In the last few years, um, I would say that we have um, complained about the level of leadership in the sports scene in Africa. It's obvious there is a yen for leadership that truly works and gets um, things done. So now more than before, it has become important for us to focus on energies on. So um, our Be the Change team is a clarion call to all stakeholders to be positive and also um, progressive, if I should put it that way. Um, change agents in their respective field. This year, we have a um, CEO of um, Simba SC, that is Barbara Gonzalez, um, coming through Tato Moing of um, Super Sport. We have Na Odofole, and um, our special speaker, um, who also guest speaker, who also be there, is um, Her Excellency, um, Madam Hajia Samira Baumia. Um, she's doing this with us um, this year. So it's on July 27th. Um, at the International Conference Center at 9 a.m. prompt, and we'll get to um, share ideas because I always say the change starts with us and we must be um, active partakers in that, not on Lucas. Mm, that's brilliant. Um, just, just, just so uh, people are clear, just repeat on how you can participate or attend the conference. Just repeat that for us before you go. Um, so it's through registration, and we open that. Uh, fortunately, we closed registration yesterday because of the numbers that um, we're looking for. Um, we don't want to go over <laughs> and for security and everything, so we need to put all um, things in check. So we open registration, um, we sent out invites, and um, we're expecting really powerful um, African women in sports at the Accra International Conference Centre on Wednesday, July 27th, yes. Julia, thank you very much, and we wish you all the best. Um, oh, thank you, guys, for having hey, me. Hey, Julie Jew, man, you oh, ten oh, hack, oh, Eric, Julie, Julie Jew. Jew. No, 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 miss you, Julie. Look, this is in Man United, eh? You just relax for us. Julie Jew. Oh, 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 I'm Julie. not talking about Man United, though. Me, I'm not, you know, I have, I have to unveil myself, like, a team that I'll be supporting this season is very important. Juve, 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 you are with Man United. Uh, why are you going? Please, please don't bring no, that. We need you. I'm you know, the captain. The transfer <laughs> window is so open. The transfer window for so supporters is no, closed. No, no, no it's closed. No, so hey, she no. says no hard breaks this season. Julian, congratulations and all the best at your summit. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So you had Juliet Bewa there. Africa Women's Sports Summit Conference Center. Should be fun. Educative. Yeah, opportunity. I'll be there. I'll be there to, yeah, to we need to be we need to, we need to be there to support so her, you know. Nice. I think it's a I think it's a really it's credible, great. credible um Fantastic. venture she's she's on. I think it will help a lot of young ladies out there. So big ups to all um you guys making this one a reality. Thank you guys for making the show a big one. Thanks to Raman the Wolf man. Jinjanku. Osman. Yeah. Jinjanku. Yeah, yeah, yeah,
Thank you, Aman. Aman, Thank Aman you. is a Man City fan. Yeah, yeah I know. No. I know. Pep Guardiola. Before, before Pep. Before Pep was big, he was out here advocating for him every day. Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Coach Nimli. Uh, thank you, Nathan Kwa. Thank you to Susu Graham, Bernard Esa, Edwin Kwakofi, uh, Rita Menta, and everybody who's helped to make this a uh, success. Thank you to all of you who did the listening, text messages, tweets, and all. Same time next week, Sports Panorama will come your way. Until then, you can catch the repeat after the news at 12 tomorrow.